Welcome to Rodos' video about Urgehal, one of the best black metal bands ever to come from Norway. Really, one of the best. Now, usually when people start listing Norwegian black metal bands, they're dropping names like Mayhem, they're dropping names like Burzum, Immortal, Dark Throne, etc. You get names like Emperor, Dimmuborger, everybody knows those bigger names. But one name is, in my opinion, uh, actually underestimated, undervalued, underrated. I don't know, I don't care how you will say it, but um, I often keep saying so many bands are at the same time underrated and overrated. That means where one person says, hey, this band right here is the best band in its genre or in its country or whatever. The next guy here says, no, it's just crap. Everybody knows it. And um, that's why the saying some bands are underrated or overrated is kind of a moot point. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Yet, even this being said, my as a my disclaimer, I'm here to say that Ergehal is actually one of those <coughs> Norwegian black metal names that so often is uh, kept forgotten. Because, you know, they never made that big. They never made so many albums, never showed so many uh, shows and never got to what could be described as black metal mainstream. And why I use quotation marks is this very simple reason. Black metal is still not a mainstream thing. As much as you might say and point out, hey, Dimmu Burger has over one million followers on uh, Facebook or whatever, it's still not something that you will hear when, you know, Super Bowl game is there or in other sports events. It's not like when you tune your random rock radio station, it's not like you will hear black metal there. At least most parts of the world anyway. I mean, it's totally different once again <clears throat> to talk about bands like, you know, Metallica, Iron Maiden and so forth. And then mention, yeah, but hey, Satyricon is pretty big as well. It's not, not even close. Even if in terms of uh, black metal, it might be big. Now, Ergel never made it as big as Ember. Everybody knows that. Even though Ember made only half of the amount of albums, but then again, it's way more easier to approach with its kind of a more melodic, more symphonic output and all that stuff. While Urgal was always the kind of a raw, dirty and violent kind of stuff. It never made to do so many albums early on as the kind of a first wave of Norwegian black metal, which is most commonly known as just the second wave of black metal. Now, everybody knows that a lot of these names, which I mentioned early on in this video, are the ones that probably made their first albums between the span of 1991-1994. You know, they were the real first wave of Norwegian black metal. And as such, we could say they had a head start. Urgehal came to be a little bit later, at least album-wise. But nevertheless, it's not that uh, young band, or wasn't that young band. Now the band is non-existent because one of the uh, members unfortunately is dead, has been many years now, and obviously the band was put to early grave because of that. Very unfortunate, but hey, life is giving us shit, and uh, we just have to deal with it. And the reason why I don't have my Urgehal shirt on on this video, well, you can pretty much see on the picture here, this was taken at uh, our self-defense seminar a few years ago, some three, four years ago now, where I was one of the hosts and, well, my Urgehal shirt was never good quality. I uh, got it from, I don't know, early 2000s someplace and the result was this after uh, having lots of uh, sparring and, you know, cloth fearing and all. <laughs> so there's my reason not wearing a Urgehal shirt at all. Anyway, let's tune for Metal Archives and now it's time to talk about worst to best of Urgehal. Like I said, the band was quite early on. I mean, founded in 1992, which means then again, the band actually was pretty early on right there. Not in 1980s, like bands like Dark Throne and the stuff, but I mean, compared to so many other bands from Norwegian early 90s bands, well, these guys were right there. But they were a little bit late to the game, especially with their debut album, Armor Christi, which came only as late as 1997. The era which so many people refer to, like, okay, the golden era had already passed, you know, the first major, the most important years of Norwegian black metal had ceased to exist by the time 
and as such Urgehal might be seen as kind of a nearer school of Norwegian black metal for that reason. Now putting together my personal 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 worst to best video for Urgehal wasn't as easy as I imagined. I mean I've done similar videos for bands like uh, Bathory, Dark Throne, Death and so forth and uh, I think it would be very, very easy for me to just you know go with Urgehal as such. Now the difficulty doesn't most certainly come from the fact that the music would be poor or sucking or crappy or whatever, quite the contrary. Uh, now the thing was that I had a little bit of a hard time putting these in my personal favorite order, which was way easier with bands like Bathory or Dark Throne. I mean obviously I had there a couple of um, things, a little bit issues like hey if these two are next to perfect which one would go first? those kind of things, but with Urgehal I think it was more than that. You know, Bathory, there's a big gap from the worst albums to the best albums. Dark Throne, almost similar thing. Urgehal, not so much. But here it goes, and uh, I'm not gonna say that this order is written in stone. This is what I, however, felt uh, during the past few months when I've been listening to this, uh, this band back and forth, and I originally wanted to make this already in 2020. But then I had issues with reviewing albums and all that stuff and didn't have the time to listen. And when I got back, I mean, already a few months had gone. And I had this time, hard time figuring out which was the best and not so hard time figuring which is the worst. So here it goes, more or less, even though, once again, not written in stone. Now, when the band started in 1997 with its first album, I mean, started as album-wise, Armor Christi came out through No Colors Records Germany. And uh, this, along with the second album that came out quite soon after this, was my first landing spot for Urgehal. And I never really liked Armor Christi that much. I mean, the band clearly showed their potential here, you know, doing sort of raw, rawish Norwegian black metal and all that stuff. But it didn't fully click with me. And even to this day, it doesn't. I mean, there is nothing big like wrong here with the album. It's actually quite decent, quite easy to still enjoy and all that stuff. I mean, there is no big faults in production or songwriting, but it's more like a decent album rather than really good one. So would I go here what is presented as average score of 83? No way. Um, I guess I would be closer to something like 70, 75, a lot across those lines. Never really fully clicked with me. And as such, I don't even have this on physical format. It's quite a quite decent album, and for, for a first album, debut album, very, very decent. But is it a really good album that, you know, can, you know, how, how can, can it be the later albums? Is it up for comparison? Not really, it pales in comparison, if you ask me. So that would be the bottom one for me. Not exactly bad, but as the case is, worst to best, somebody has to take the bottom spot. And then it becomes so much more difficult for me because throughout these next other albums, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, I, you know, it's really, really hard because out of seven albums, I think the band actually has six good albums. And uh, I keep asking like myself, like, uh, which would be the order? I made some notes even because, you know, to figure out like which order I would Close and why I don't show you is that I want to mention it. I don't want to show you properly here what's going on. But for it, it was really hard for me to figure out because they all are more or less rawish black metal. And at the same time, they kind of have the dark thronian groove with their music. Maybe a lot dirtier than what Dark Throne later on did. But still, um, you know, quite similar in style if we're talking about Urgehal albums in, in comparison to one another. So what I would pick for the next one, oops, I'm clicking obviously the wrong window here, would be Goldcraft Torment from 2006. It's not like it's a lot worse than anything else here. Quite the contrary, once again, for me, it was hard time to pick. And if you look at these other scores here, you know, obviously they are different reviewers, but to just make my point, it's not that different for others either. I mean, you have the weakest point here of 80% for uh, Massive Terrestrial Strike, 
whereas 90% for a couple of albums. And then, uh, well, yeah, full-length albums. I mean, there is nothing really under 80 and nothing over 90. And that is exactly what I feel. But for me, it would be, I guess, Goatcraft Torment because it doesn't really have the feeling what had these albums that came before that. True Thick Fog of Thick Fog Thill Death, Adam Kinder, Massive Terrestrial Strike. But it already had the same style. I mean, it was pretty much going on with the same style as the previous three albums. I wouldn't say Armor Christie because it's a little bit different in my opinion. And I think the band made its biggest, biggest step between the first two albums and then moving on once again to Adam Kinder. But as a third bottom place, I would guess. Massive Terrestrial Strike would take that place. I mean, that is the album that got me going for Urgehal, which really, you know, ignited my love for the band. And um, that was already something that made a big, big difference for Armor Christie. I mean, the band has way better groove and the uh, songwriting is kind of a more catchy. It feels more dangerous as the debut album and everything seems to be placed. Also, it's not very lengthy. It's only 36 minutes, which means there are no filler material as such. And I think this is actually the uh, very first album for the band or release that already, you know, nailed it. Obviously, they had only one album out before that and demos, but even... Compar comparing it to Goldcraft Tournament, I think it's a little bit better made than that. And then it gets quite complicated because there are like three albums which I, in my opinion, are very, very much in par with together. So this order of albums could be changing from day to day perspective. But because, you know, uh, unless you can really beat the previous albums, I would say than the previous albums is actually best. So it's a, like two albums which are like, say, nine out of ten. I mean, the first one to reach that level would be better than the previous ones because you really couldn't improve. I don't know if this logic makes much of a sense to you, but it does to me because, after all, I'm the one who has to pick the order. So as such, I guess my um, finger would be going to uh, through thick fog till death. Because to me, it wasn't as good as Atom Kinder. I'm saying it already here. And even though it's a really good album, it doesn't really improve from that. And while the band certainly has this kind of a Dachthronian feeling here, being raw and violent and aggressive and kind of a sinister, well, it wasn't better than that. So it was more like a good successor, but wasn't really improving the sound or the feel of the band. But obviously by this time, I mean, they had three really good albums in. I was like, yeah, this is my cup of tea. Now, bands could be, you know, going on decline. And even though I said that I favor Atom Kinder, Through Thick Fork, Till Death and Massive Terrestrial Strike over Goldcraft Torment, it doesn't mean that Goldcraft Torment is a bad album. By, the mean, by no means, I mean, it's really good, but these three are a little bit better. So from Through Thick Fog Till Death, I guess we could go straight to Iconoclast and Eons in Sodom. Now, which one would be better? I really don't know. Once again, these these three are very much in the same level. Now I already revealed what would be my number one. So Iconoclast and Aeons in Sodom, very much together. And in this case, I would say, I guess, that, you know, these are interchangeable in order. So which would be the second best one? I really don't know. Uh, because the style is like these are clearly successors to the previous ones, but not in decline, not in improvement. And uh, in in those terms, I guess I would say Iconoclast is the second best. But maybe in different day, I would say Eons in Sodom. Really good albums. And I think already this list proves, at least for me, that this is a very, very strong album. Watch like what, what say... Bands like Marduk is for some people, you know, making very consistent in style, not changing, maybe not even improving, but, you know, doesn't getting, it's not, it's not getting worse by, by album after album. So uh, given that this was less than two decades, the band was able to make a bunch of really good albums. And the best one would be, in my case, Atom Kinder. Is it actually that much better than the previous albums? I don't know. It's a little bit better, however. This is my favorite uh, Urgehal album for reasons 
that, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. Once again, I keep saying this. The, all these later albums, since the first one, are so clear, uh, clearly uh, next to each other in terms of quality and style, it's kind of hard for me to pick. And this even makes, makes doing this video kind of hard, because it's more like, can you pick your favorite baby? Can you pick up your favorite kid from the rest? You have like five kids. I mean, I don't know what for Vary Vikernes would say. He has something like seven babies. How can he choose his favorite one? Maybe he can, he's like that, but you know. But now what makes this interesting is that this album has only seven tracks, 28 minutes, and it has two covers. So can these five tracks make the difference? I guess that might be really the thing. Now, some of these other albums are more than 50 minutes in total length. Like, look at the Aeons in Sodom. 12 tracks already, okay, a couple of tracks also there, but almost 50 minutes. Uh, Iconoclast, well, 56 minutes, which is kind of too much for this kind of stuff, unless you have really, really killer material. Also, through uh, Thick Fog, 56 minutes. And this is why I probably prefer, you know, Atom Kinder, partially anyway. It is more compact. It delivers those blows in a very short of time, relatively speaking, versus the ones that are, you know, packing more guns, but don't actually make bigger bang, if you get my meaning. Now, the bottom line here is, this band, which has only seven albums, only and only, once again, very uh, subjective, because there are bands like have Cannibal Corpse or Marduk, have, which have like 16 or something like that. But comparing to bands like Emperor, I think Urgehal made a lot more quality work, because they have like seven albums, and I think six of them uh, is worth owning for me anyway. Whereas Emperor, well, it would be different. Now, once again, this is kind of a, my love letter to the band. The band that uh, unfortunately had to quit uh, because of Drund Nefas, also known as Drund Pothen, uh, died in 2012. So uh, that may meant that the band had to end. It was all over with that. And I get it. I mean, uh, when, once you have so, such a key member of the band and uh, ceased to exist, had to die, deceased, and, and end of game. I mean, obviously, this is kind of a hard decision for the band. I mean, at the same time, it could have been really, really easy, you know, to say, okay, one of our brothers is, is gone in battle, killed in action. There is no reason to continue. It's kind of like uh, paying tribute to this member. Some other bands might have it kept going. And I also understand that kind of logic. But for me, it made a lot of sense that the band decided to just call it quits and that it. Now, as the legacy of both Trondr and other members, well, Urgehal definitely made it into my books of being one of the best black metal bands from Norway ever. And I think that's a, quite a big accomplishment, given the quality of the country's black metal scene. So, in case you have missed Urgehal altogether, or just some of the albums, this is my video excuse to say, listen to them all. Listen even to Armor Christie, even though it's the weakest one of them all. A really great band that I was lucky to hear a lot. I was uh, lucky to see them live only once though, but still. So great band uh, and uh, what can I say I really hope that you will give it a chance in case you haven't and enjoy it thanks for your watching time and uh, should you have comments or questions put them on the comments box below and I'll get back to you meanwhile go listen to some Urgal take care